proper watering is essential to seedling development. Guten gardening, everybody. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to identify and avoid overwatering and underwatering in seedlings. Water is essential to the development of seedlings, but too much or too little can cause stress and damage to the seedlings. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can recognize some of the signs of overwatering or underwatering. And then we're gonna provide some tips for properly watering your seedlings to ensure their health and vitality. Now, first I'm gonna address the signs that your seedlings are overwatered. And the first one I wanna talk about is wilting because plants that are overwatered will often wilt. And the reason behind that is that the water actually pushes out, decreases the amount of oxygen available to the roots of your plant, and essentially suffocates your seedlings before they can even really get a firm start. Remember that plants have to have the ability to breathe in order to grow and develop. And so overwatering can cause wilting when the plant is essentially killed by not allowing it to breathe. Now, a secondary symptom of overwatering is the yellowing of leaves. And this is one of those symptoms where you typically see the yellowing happening in the lower leaf area first and then expanding upwards along the plant. And our research indicates that the reason for that yellowing is because the water is flushing out the nutrients that's in the soil mix. And so you're not actually getting the absorption of the nutrients that your plants need. And so you start to see the leaves first turning yellow and then falling off and dying completely. Now, another sign that your plants are overwatered is the presence of root rot. And you've probably seen root rot in transplants before because what we're typically looking for when we're transplanting a seedling out into our garden or wherever, we're looking for a nice, bright white, healthy, vibrant root system. And root rot, which is a fungal disease, will come in and it will discolor the roots. It will turn them a brownish shade. And what that does is makes your plants weaker, makes them more susceptible to other potential pests and diseases. And so while you might get some production out of plants that have root rot, the probability that they're gonna be as healthy and as productive is much lower. So to avoid root rot, you gotta avoid that overwatering. If you're starting to see some of your roots turning color in addition to some of the other symptoms, you know that's a potential problem. Now, another sign that you're overwatering is the development of mold or algae across the surface of your seed trays or whatever seedling setup you have. Typically, that's a white or a greenish color, depending on what it is that's developing. And while algae and mold aren't necessarily going to negatively impact your plants immediately, one of the things that there's speculation that it does is to inhibit some of the exchange of gases across the surface of the growing area. And that can work to suffocate your plants, just like some of the other problems can create a problem for root development and therefore inhibit the growth of your plants. And of course, it's indicative of the bigger problem of overwatering, which means that a lot of the other problems can follow that we've seen before when it comes to overwatering your plants. And on top of that, it tends to attract another sign that you're overwatering, which are your fungus gnats. And fungus gnats are really interesting because the adult gnats are incredibly annoying. In fact, I'm sure I've eaten one or two in my time because once you have a few of them, they just go everywhere. But the adults themselves don't really create harm to your plants. But what can create harm to your seedlings would be the larvae because the larvae feed on the roots of your seedlings. And so if you have enough of them, if they appear in mass, you could end up having them destroy the seedlings that you're trying to develop. So you try to reduce the instances of that by reducing the amount of overwatering so they're less attracted to the area where your seedlings are. And that's gonna help prevent that problem. Another sign that you might be overwatering has to do with the overall rate of development of your plant. Because if you're overwatering, it can actually slow the process by which your plant is growing because again, that overwatering can deplete the amount of nutrients and then reduce the intake of nutrients of your seedlings. And so what that means is it's going to grow slower than you expect. Now, a final indicator that you may have been overwatering your seedlings is the smell of the soil. And I'm gonna give you the example of what we see in our vermiculture bin. In this bin, we're consistently adding organic matter, but because we don't allow it to have too much moisture in there, we don't have a problem with the smell. But if we let it get too wet, we'll definitely start to see that kind of issue. 
Think about the smell of any place that has been stagnant for a while because it's filled with water. That buildup of organic matter right alongside the lack of oxygen is going to create some of those not so pleasant smells. So if you smell your mix and you notice that it's not smelling so good, that's another indicator that you might be overwatering. So I talked pretty extensively about some of those signs that you're overwatering, but there are three signs that we want to talk about as well for when you're underwatering, which of course can have just as devastating of effects. Now I think it's pretty hard to oversell the importance of consistent watering for our seedlings when according to one of our resources from West Virginia University's Extension Office, water comprises up to 95% of some plant's tissues. I mean, that's a massive amount. So you can imagine what happens if you underwater and you deprive plants of what they need for that tissue makeup. So just like when you overwater, you can get wilting as a sign that you're underwatering, and that can happen fairly quickly. If you allow your soil mix to dry out, those plants can fall over and wilt because they're not able to intake a lot of the nutrients that having enough water allows to happen because water is what allows the plants to carry the nutrients throughout their entire growing system. So we underwater, we get wilting. Another sign that we're underwatering is very simple, very obvious, I think, and that is that the mix itself will feel dry to the touch. And that's not just at the surface level. Oftentimes, if you stick your finger down into a pot or container, whatever you've got your seedlings growing in, you can find that dry feeling throughout. And it's important to remember that some of the mixes that you might create yourself could be hydrophobic, especially at the start, meaning that they don't actually take on water very well. And so if you're not careful and you don't do it in a slow process at first, watering in a slow process, you could end up having the water just run right through and you're not actually getting a good damp mixture at the beginning. And once you get past that initial stage again, and you've got a nice damp mix, it's important to keep it at a level where it doesn't feel dry. And just like if you're overwatering, you can stunt or slow the growth of your seedlings as well when you're underwatering. Because again, if they can't access the water, they can't access the nutrients and they can't push the nutrients throughout the system. So they're not only going to wilt, but they're not going to grow all that quickly. So it's important now to talk about how we water our seedlings to prevent any of these problems from happening. So when it comes to watering, one of the first things we want to consider is how the soil feels. And a lot of people use the rule of sticking their finger down two knuckles deep. So that's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches down to see whether the soil that depth feels dry or if it's still moist. And I can say if the soil still feels damp at that point, then go ahead and wait a little bit longer to add water to it. If it's starting to feel dry already at that depth, then you want to give it a watering. And when you do water, our preference is to give less frequent but deeper waterings so that whenever we're watering, what we're creating is the optimal environment for our roots to dig deeper and to expand. If all we ever do is water the surface level, that doesn't encourage that good deep root growth. That's so important when it comes to our plants developing. So less frequent but deeper waterings are preferable in most cases to shallower, shorter waterings that happen more frequently. Now, another thing that's really important when it comes to watering is that the mix that you're watering into is a good well-draining mix. I've seen lots of pictures of people recently posted online where they have this drenched mix because it's just not well-draining. So what I have here is a good well-draining mix and I'm actually sifting it down just through a simple sifter here to make the particulates even so basically what we have in here is our cocoa cure, our perlite, and our peat moss. You can see lots of perlite in there. This is going to hold moisture but also drain really well. And again, basically all I'm trying to do here is to create those smaller particles. And I'm going to show you really quickly here exactly what those particles look like because it's super fine. It takes a little bit longer to create this, but we've had good success growing in this type of medium before. It won't allow the water to pull up by our roots, causing potential root rot, etc. So a good, well-draining mix in the right kind of container. And when I say the right kind of container, there are actually several things that we have to take into consideration for what we're starting our seedlings in. Because what you have to remember is seedlings don't need all that much mix to get started. And so if you start with too big of a container, you could end up with too much water in the soil because the plant's not going to need to take up all that much. 
and you could end up overwatering it, even if you're not watering all that much. You also, again, need lots of good holes and good drainage at the base of your soil. And there's actually a bunch of research out there, and I'm going to link a lot of this research down below in the description so you can see exactly what I'm referring to. But there's plenty of research out there about the different types of containers that you can start your seeds in and which ones hold or retain more moisture than others. Because trays or containers made out of compressed peat or fiber tend to retain moisture more than say a clay pot, for example, because clay pots have porous walls, which means that water can evaporate more quickly. So that's something to keep in mind. We often use plastic here, which retains the moisture fairly well. But again, whatever it is that you're trying to grow in, you need to have the correct container for your seedlings and your soil mix. So again, I'm going to link that research at the bottom. A lot of what we're doing here is researching for our own benefit as well. So when you see a video like this, where we're talking about the things that we need to do to make sure we're doing the right thing by our seedlings as we're trying to get them to grow, that's because we're doing the research that's necessary to make sure we're successful. But I'm always going to give credit where credit is due when it comes to the research we're doing. All right, I'm going to interrupt this video very briefly to do our 31st giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening Gardening Gift Giving. Well, folks, can you believe we're at day 31 of our 31 days of Guten Gardening Gardening Gift Giving? I tell you what, it's been a fantastic series, and this will not be the last of our giveaways in the coming months, okay? So stay tuned for some more details on that. But that being said, let's find out who today's winners are. Are going to be well first let's check out our first prize which is a 25 dollars amazon gift card you can't go wrong with a gift card that can get you an awful lot when it comes to gardening all right let's find out who our first winner is today day number 31 first of two goes to lisa madam congratulations lisa well done all right, folks, you can go ahead and congratulate Lisa, or you can wait until you see the name of our second winner. But Lisa, when you see this video and you see that you won, go ahead and leave a comment on this video, and we'll be sure to get back with you so we can get the prize shipped out to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's check out our second prize. And our second prize is a twofer. We've got a heat mat because it is seed starting season. And what's gonna go on that heat mat? We've got some of these seed starter trays. We have this same pack here that we're going to be using this season. So our second winner gets both of these prizes. Let's see who that winner is. All right, let's see who our final winner is in our 31 days of giving. I tell you what, I hope you've all had fun. It's been exciting for us. Our winner is Randy Smith. Congratulations, Randy. Well, folks, Go ahead and congratulate both people in the comments section. And Randy, when you see that you've won, go ahead and leave a comment on this video and we'll be in touch to get that prize out to you as quickly as possible. Now, this is very important to note. This is not our last giveaway for this year. We're going to have several other giveaways, but we're going to do them at random times throughout this upcoming season. And you never know when we're going to start and they're going to be really good giveaways so you have to be on the lookout for it make sure you continue commenting on these videos we've really enjoyed reading your comments even if we haven't been able to respond as quickly as possible but we're going to keep those giveaways coming and we won't always tell you when they're about to drop now another thing i've talked about when it comes to watering your plants and i think that this is important to remember we try our best especially for our seedlings but in general to not water from above. Now we typically water underneath, we put the water in below whatever seed tray we have growing to try to avoid introducing more opportunities for fungal diseases, etc., to come into our plants and the algae to reduce the amount of times where we're gonna have those fungus gnats. But if you wanna think about it on a bigger scale, consider what happens if you water, say your squash plants from up above. Or think about what happens when you have a massive amount of rain over an extended period of time. The probability that you're going to see something like powdery mildew, that fungal spread throughout your plants, is higher. So we try to avoid that. We water at the base of those plants 
So what we do for our seedlings, we prefer to water below the seedlings instead of from up above. Now another thing you can do to try to improve your watering in general is to have a moisture meter. Those are relatively inexpensive. You can buy them for $12, $14 online. You can even get them at your local nursery. But the moisture meter is a great and easy way to simply stick the meter down into whatever tray you're growing in and sample and see what moisture level you've got. They're not always 100% accurate, but they do give a pretty good indicator of your moisture level. But I think most importantly out of all this, pay attention to your seedlings, because if you start to see one of the signs that we talked about, either for overwatering or underwatering of your seedlings, you can make adjustments to the watering that you're doing. As long as you catch it early on, typically you can make adjustments and still have some nice healthy plants. Unfortunately, it doesn't take a lot of time or a lot of over or under watering to really negatively impact the plant. So be on the lookout for the signs of overwatering, be on the lookout for the signs of underwatering, and just pay attention to the plants themselves. Check on them regularly. Again, they're alive. You got to keep living things alive somehow, and water is a key factor that you don't want to mess up. Well, folks, thank you so much for being a part of this video today. We hope it was helpful. Congratulations once again to our day 31 winner. Remember, we're not done with our giveaways. There are going to be more giveaways, random giveaways, over the next couple of months. But you're going to have to watch the videos to see where they're going to be because we like to surprise our audience for sure. We hope you enjoyed this series and this video. If you did, don't forget to give us a like. Leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.